Right now at 6 o'clock, efforts to keep kids protected from scorching hot cars. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin will tell you about the push for more technology to keep kids safe. Plus, calls to regulate e-cigarettes advocates are gathering today to raise concerns about kids vaping. And the latest after a woman drowned when her canoe flipped. We'll tell you what we know this morning. All local, all morning. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good morning. Happy Monday. Thanks for choosing us here at Fox 61. And uh, we're glad you're here. I'm Eric Arias. And I'm Tim Lammers. Welcome back. You have some good time off? I did. I got to sleep until like 7 or 8 every Fantastic. night, every morning. Uh, living the dream. So I'm not used to this. <laughs> With extra <laughs> I dreams, I got to get used too. to it again. Yeah, it was nice. It was very nice. Good, good. And some good weather, too. We're checking in with meteorologist Matt Scott morning. this Monday morning. People always look at me crazy when I sleep in and tell them I sleep in on the weekends till 6, 6.30 in the morning. Mm. It's like, wait, it is sleeping in for us. Well, sometimes that's sleeping in, but right. I actually got to sleep in a little later. Wow. Yeah. Jealous. Loved Welcome it. back. Nice to have you here. Nice to have you as well. Not a bad start to the week. Uh, temperatures, uh, dew points for the most part behaving for August. The humidity is in check. Talk about storms returning soon to the forecast that's coming up. Cloud and radar picture has a very light wind out of the north and west. Beautiful sunrises this morning. A few clouds out there, but no rain. Going to hold that off till tomorrow. You can see some showers and thunderstorms in the Tennessee Valley uh, up into uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota as well. 66 in Hartford, New Haven. 68 right now in Groton with the dew points. I like this. Uh, lower 60s, even a 59 in Meredith. As long as we keep that there will be fine and as you can see eh, until later on tonight we tick it upwards in advance of a, a round of showers and storms that'll get here by tomorrow morning all right here's the planner for today looking for a few clouds here and there but dry temperatures right where they should be mid 80s for highs we'll take that talk about your tuesday storms and what the rest of the week has as well that's coming up in a few minutes 602 let's go to the roads i can say for the first time on this monday Good morning, Rachel Piscadelli. Hey, good morning to you, Matt. Uh, things are looking pretty good here in the traffic center now. Um, so no major delays to report. We do have one delay, though, over in Milford, which we'll get to in just a moment. Also on 691, some road work wrapping up this morning on the east and the westbound side. So we're starting to see some slowdowns on that eastbound side where traffic speeds are averaging just around 18 miles per hour. Over in Milford, some heavy delays on that southbound side. So it is going to set you back just a bit. You can see a live look outside where traffic is kind of going. I mean, the, the camera froze, but you get the picture. Over in Waterbury, 84 East and Westbound, we did have some earlier road work that has wrapped up for the morning commute. It is 6.03. Guys, back to you. Rachel, thank you. Well, today, uh, state leaders and firefighters will join together to warn parents of the dangers of leaving children in hot cars. Senator Richard Blumenthal is leading the effort here. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin is live in Hartford now with what leaders are asking for. Brooke, good morning. Hi, good morning to you both. This is something that Senator Richard Blumenthal, other lawmakers, and of course those first responders have been pushing for for years. And they say if they can get this technology passed, then it could end up preventing hot car deaths. And that technology would be in place to remind people and really alert those parents and anyone that may be in the front seat to check their back seats before they get out of the car, theoretically preventing those deaths from happening. Since 1990, more than 1,000 children have died in a hot car, but more more than 7,300 children have survived, and they've been left with varying degrees of injuries. Senator Richard Blumenthal has been trying for, to prevent these deaths for years with the Hot Cars Act. This requires the U.S. Department of Transportation to issue a final ruling requiring all new cars to be equipped with an alert to remind drivers to check the back seat. He tells us he is urging the DOT to make a decision before that November deadline. First responders say even the warmer spring temperatures can turn the inside of cars up to a dangerous level. Now in the middle of summer, any amount of time left in a hot car can be deadly for anyone of any age. And Blumenthal is meeting with firefighters today in Bridgeport, along with a few other state leaders and of course parents as well, to really discuss the importance of getting that final ruling passed. He says that he will, of course, speak on the hot car preventative ways to act as a parent as well. Live in Hartford, Brooke Ruffin, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Brooke, thanks so much. Now, one of those tech options to help drivers make sure no child or pet is left in a hot car is being made reality by Nissan. Two of the company's engineers, who are also moms, 
have developed rear door assist technology. Now it's the industry's first system to use the car horn in addition to door sensors and a message display on the center <laughs> instrument panel. After the vehicle is parked, that dashboard message and sensor triggered loud honking. That serves as a reminder to check the back seat. Happening today, lawmakers, health experts and advocates are calling on the FDA to regulate e-cigarettes, pointing to the addictive dangers those products present to children. Now, a survey from last year found that more than two and a half million high school and middle school students do use e-cigarettes and one in four report using them daily. Fox 61's Angelo Bavaro is live in East Hartford or actually Hartford right there in front of the state capitol with more about what is expected today. Good morning. Tim, Erica, good morning. That news conference is scheduled for 12 this afternoon with members of the Governor's Prevention Partnership. Now, these e-cigarettes, they are regulated at the federal level, but advocates are taking concern with flavored e-cigarettes still being on the market despite the addictive dangers those products present to young people. Now, among the other concerns that advocates are also raising, take a look at this is how these products are marketed to young people. This right here on your screen, this is actually a vape designed to look like a highlighter. At today's news conference, advocates will renew calls for the FDA to finalize its review of pre-market tobacco product applications for e-cigarette products that remain on the market without approval, which has been delayed for about two years at this point. Among those requests, continue to deny applications for all non-tobacco flavored e-cigarettes, including menthol. One school district in Texas also taking its own action by installing vape detectors in every bathroom. Take a listen. The thing with the vapes is they're, they're hard to physically detect. I mean, they can come in so many different shapes and sizes and forms. According to doctors, there are a variety of complications that can come from vaping. And doctors also say that if you start vaping or smoking early, say around 12 to 14 years old, it's going to be much harder to quit smoking or vaping when you're older, around 30. We are live outside the state capitol this morning. I'm Angelo Bafaro, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Okay, Angelo, uh, thank you so much for that report. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, new this morning, Hartford police said they're investigating a report of shots fired, and they did find one man hurt, but they said he wasn't shot. They said this all happened around 11:10 last night in the first block of Elliott Street. Uh, that man who was hurt was taken to a hospital, and he is stable. Well, officials have released the name of the woman who died while canoeing in the Hammond Acid River. They said 81-year-old uh, Gua Chihua of Madison died after her canoe flipped over. She was taking part in a guided canoe program with another adult and a child. Officials said Chihua was wearing a life jacket at the time. Well, one man is in the hospital this morning after being shot several times at a condo complex in Hamden. Police responded to reports of gunfire at the Regency Hills condos early yesterday morning. The SWAT team also responded. Detectives from major crimes are actively investigating. Police say the victim's injuries are serious, but no update yet on his condition. Three firefighters were hurt during a call in Woodbury. This happened yesterday on Ridgewood Road. The fire chief says her crew was trying to fight the flames inside the home when the second floor collapsed. Four firefighters were trapped. Three suffered minor injuries. The house is now a total loss. It is going to have to be torn down. No word on what caused the fire. La Waterbury woman is going to learn her prison sentence today for her role in another woman's death. Cassandra Nazario pleaded guilty to charges that included accessory to murder. A police arrested Nazario and Miles Johnson as well back in September of 2020. Prosecutors said Johnson stabbed Rachel Sabetlella to death and left her body at Black Rock <clears throat> State Park in Watertown. Johnson is currently serving a 55-year prison sentence for murder.